Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come bring the praise of the Lord into this house. Into this house. Let's fill the room with the sound of the praise of his people. Come bring the praise. Bring the praise of the Lord into this house, into this house. Let's fill the room with the sound of the praise of his people. Come bring the praise of the Lord into this house, into this house. Come let us celebrate the greatness of our God. Well, I miss a chance to worship. So good to me every day. His mercy's all that I see. Another opportunity has come to exalt his name on high. Oh, won't you come and help us? Praise the name of Jesus. Come bring the praise of the Lord into this house. Into this house. Let's fill the room. you, Lord. I'm glad we can celebrate our God today. God bless you. Thank you for being here. You may be seated. All those joining us online, we are so thankful that you are with us. Just a few announcements for you this morning. If you are interested in some TPC gear, we have that now available. If you'd like some sweatshirts, some t-shirts, you can see Brother Scott after church this week over in the conference room. You can also pick up some next week, or you can always shop online. Grab it there. You can see the selections that you want. You do not have to pay today, but you can take it home with you. But just pay in a decent manner and make sure you uh, get that taken care of. Also, we're going to be celebrating some graduates. How many remembers graduating high school? A big deal. It's exciting. And so... If you would like to celebrate some graduates, we're going to be giving some of our grads some cards for next week. So please bring them a card if you can, or at least congratulate them. Say good job for all your efforts and uh, just, a, just an exciting time in life. You know, you went all the way from kindergarten, you've graduated, so please celebrate them in some manner if you can. In Praise in the Park, May 29th is going to be a great time. We're going to have a picnic lunch following 
You're going to want to be a part of it. We're going to be outside at Rothwell Park. You can bring your lunch with you. You can leave quickly, go grab something, bring it back, enjoy some fellowship and some games afterwards. So please join us for that. And also, if you have a kindergartner through 12th grader that has A's and B's on their report card through this last semester, through J January through May, they qualify to be on Pastors Honor Row. And so if you have those grades, go ahead and show Sister Jessie your report card. You get a free meal June 12th to hang out with Pastor. And so take advantage of that. You put in the work. Go ahead and enjoy the fruits of your labor. And there's going to be a Ladies' Day trip at Arrow Rock Saturday, June 4th at 9.30 a.m. See Sister Jessie for details. A good opportunity for the girls to get together and have some fun. And if I have some ushers to help me today, we're going to be taking an offering today for the building fund. And as you can see, we have some major progress currently being done. And so we are very thankful for that. And so can we cheer as the ushers come? Because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We cheer at the opportunity to give today. And we're going to pray over this offering that the Lord would bless it and he would multiply it. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the opportunity to give today. Lord, we thank you for the progress that's currently being done on this building, on this property. More importantly, the progress being done in your kingdom, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We ask you to bless this offering, to multiply it, help it supply every need. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for giving. to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. do now we're going to go to that rock and take our needs to him so this last week we were praying for our prayer focus asking the lord to have his will in our church and this week we're going to pray and ask the lord to have his will in our lives you want to pray for yourself specifically that you would be obedient to what he's asking you to do and willing to let him mold and shape your life um, so just pray that throughout the week that the lord would have his perfect way in your life this morning, we want to pray for Gabe. He um, messed up his back really badly yesterday, and he's also having a number of intestinal issues. And so the Lord just really needs to touch his body and help him this morning. I um, want to pray for Neil Miller, who's going through radiation, asking the Lord to give him strength and help him in that situation. Um, Sarah, it's so good to see you here today. We're so happy you could be here. Um, we're continuing to pray for Sarah in the healing of her foot. If you'll remember, we've been praying for Sarah who broke uh, just this bone on the side of her foot and it is not healing or it hasn't been healing the way it needs to. And so we're just going to pray for you, Sarah, believing that the Lord is just going to touch that and give you what you need. Pray for Billy Bennington, who's been in pain all night long. I want to ask the Lord to take care of whatever it is that she needs. And then remember Renee Reed Miller, who is on her way home, I believe, today from Rwanda. So just ask the Lord to continue to help her and just that it would be a smooth flight home for her. Give her favor with all the right people and that she would 
just to have the opportunity to speak to whoever she needs to while she's traveling. Um, so if you would, if you can, you can stand with me. Um, Becky, it's so good to see you here in the house today, too, uh, praying for your recovery. We've been praying for Jackie as well. Um, so let's just pray and take these needs to the Lord today. Lord Jesus, we love you, and we are so thankful that you are good and kind and wonderful and faithful, and that you are here with us, that you hear us. Lord, you know that we are a needy people because there is nothing we can do without you. We've got to have you in the midst of everything that we are doing. Lord, we welcome you into this place and we welcome you into our lives, asking you to move as only you are able to. Lord, I thank you for touching each one of these needs that we've called before you. Lord, these names that you love, Lord Jesus, for Gabe and Neil, for Sarah, Billy, Renee, for the other needs, Lord, that are represented in this place or for those who are watching online. Lord Jesus, you are able to speak a word and minister. Lord Jesus, we bow before you and we worship you. We submit ourselves to you, declaring that you are the only one true God. We love you so very much. And we thank you that you hear us every time we pray. We give you all of the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. You caused the sun to rise. You lay it down to rest. You hold this heart of mine. You hold my every breath. Such an he does also you hold this heart of mine he knows you he holds your every breath such an awesome God so
nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, the Son of God, hung on a cross to die, but not even death. Nobody like you, Lord. For the name of God is mercy. For the name of God is love. Oh, the name of God is kindness. Yes. And he's pouring out on us. Pouring out on us for the name of God is mercy. Yes, it is. Oh, the name of God is love. Oh, the name of God is kindness. Yes, and He's pouring out on us. Pouring for your goodness, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love your Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head 
I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, and I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Sing it out to him right now. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Yes. Every breath that I am able, I will the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. You're running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after me. See you. 
right now, no matter what you're going through, I stand here before you, God. And when I look back, I see that you've always been there for me, forever, forever.
don't see it, you're working. Even when you don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Jesus right now. Waymaker. Jesus. Promise keeper, Lord. My God. My God. Oh. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Woo! You never stop. You never stop working. Come on, press just a little bit harder. We're almost right there. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Woo! Even when I don't in the place right now. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We make a miracle work. Promise keep right in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, say his name. We make a miracle work. Promise keep. He is a way maker. He can do anything. He can do anything today. Why don't you just stop and rest in his presence for just a moment. Let him minister to you. We don't have to move away from this spot too quickly. He's here.
speaking to you today. He can speak a specific word to whatever it is that you need. It's okay, just lift that up to him right now. Whatever hurt, whatever emptiness, whatever need it is, let him just pour in the balm of Gilead for just a moment before we move on from this place. His word can wait for just a moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your spirit right now that is settling in this place. Lord, you have a deep move. You have a deep healing for your people. Lord, I thank you for letting the depth in your spirit call to the depth of an hours. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for ministering. Thank you, Lord, that you love us enough to pause for a moment before you walk right by, Lord. Let us just touch the hem of your garment, Jesus, that we could feel the virtue flow. We've got to have it today, Lord Jesus, in this world that we live in. We've got to have your virtue come and cover us. Thank you for it, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have you make your way back to your seat, but just hold on to this. It's not going to go away just because we're pausing for just a moment. Just hold that. We're going to continue to set every distraction aside. We're going to not think about all the things that are waiting for us out there. We are in a sacred place, and we're going to hold here and just let the Lord do whatever it is that he has for us today. I'm going to read, since you're standing, we'll just read a couple of scriptures. We'll just hop right in here. Thank you for those of you who are watching online. My sweet, wonderful niece who has given her life to the Lord and is just doing incredible things, is praying for this service this morning. She was going to try to join us if she could. And I'm just thankful for her prayers. She supports me in all kinds of ways, and I can't even tell you how much I love and appreciate her. Um, Ephesians 3 and 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Is the church here today? And then... We're going to eventually get to this scripture, Genesis 44 and 33. This is a scripture from the story of Joseph and his brothers in Egypt. It says, Now therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the lad as a slave to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brothers. Let's pray one more time. Ask the Lord to speak specifically to you today. Let's pray before we're seated. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. You are clearly already in this place. You are clearly already moving, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would be exalted above all else, that we would hear your voice, Lord, and no one else is. Lord, it doesn't matter what man says. It matters what you say to us. We open our hearts to hear from you. Lord, you know exactly what we need for this week ahead. And we are asking that the seed would be sown. It would fall deep in our hearts, Lord, that it would take root and grow in the moment that we need it, Lord, that your word would be recalled. And the feeling that we feel in this place would come along with it, that we would feel you ministering to us one day when we find ourselves in a dry place, that we would think back to this moment and that same anointing and that same spirit would come and meet us there. Lord, thank you that you're planting the seed now for what we need ahead. You are a gracious and a kind God as we have sung about, and we're thankful that when we look behind us, we see your goodness running after us. We lift you up and praise you and thank you for meeting us here, Lord. In Jesus' name, you may be seated today. I believe that God can do absolutely anything in an instant, in a moment, in our bodies, in our spirits, in our minds, in our finances, in our relationships, whatever it is. 
I believe that God can do absolutely anything. And I'm going to just share a few personal things because this is what I know. And I didn't want to tell stories of, oh, one time I read this story and this thing happened to somebody far away. I wanted to remind myself and remind you of a few things to make it very clear that I believe that God can do anything like that. First of all, he saved me. I shouldn't be here. I didn't grow up knowing the Lord. And here I am. For me, number one, most incredible miracle of all. If you had told me when I was a child that one day I would be standing here talking about this, sharing experiences of the Lord, that is the furthest thing that I could have ever imagined. I, I, exceedingly abundantly above what we can think or imagine, absolutely. There's no way that I should be here today. He saves. Do you know that the Lord heals? I believe, thank you, he heals. He heals miraculously. He heals instantly. We have seen people in this church come and stand in the aisle or come to the front. You have gone to people's homes, and they have felt the presence of the Lord sweep over them, and they have been healed. I personally have miraculously been healed. When I was 17 and I was baptized, I haven't even, I, I thought, have I ever even shared this? The Lord healed my body when I was 17. I had a really weird thing that started happening to me. And it seems like such a little thing, but, and it's kind of gross. I hate to tell you, the skin on the back of my ears completely like came off on both of my ears and the skin back behind my ears was completely raw for months. And the doctor told me eventually it would happen around my scalp and around my eyebrows. And there were certain things that they could do and try, but it caused some other issues. And do you know when I got baptized and I came up out of that water, I never want, I have never had that issue ever, ever, ever again. He healed me just like that. Several years ago, I was having a lot of really weird health issues. It was like all of a sudden something just released in my body and all over. I cannot tell you the number of tests I was having to have done and things were happening and it was strange and no one could quite figure out what the problem was. It was like all over in all different systems of my body. I was having to go and get tests. And I was sitting right here on this front pew. And Sister Renee, who's not here today, walked by me. And I will never forget, she stopped and she turned around and she came back and she said, how is your health? Now, I had not told anyone outside of Scott and Jamie and shared with pastor just a few people so they could be praying. That was it. And she prayed for me, and something changed in my body right then. It, it wasn't quite completely done, but it was changed, and I knew it. And then Pastor Dustin came by and prayed for me. And again, those issues, just like that, completely changed, and it was gone. I believe that the Lord can heal in an instant. <laughs> nothing, nothing is impossible with God, friends, nothing he can heal. He gives wisdom. I, I know there have been times that I have been walking down the hall at work, and I'm getting ready to meet with someone, and it's going to be a difficult conversation, and I don't even know how to start it, and the Lord has given me a word in that instant. Times that we have, or scriptures that I have needed to pray, questions I have needed to ask, nothing is impossible with God. He has instantly delivered me from troubling, tormenting thoughts. There was a time that I had been hurt very deeply by someone, and I was soon going to have to have some extended interactions with them, and it was really bothering me. I had prayed. I had forgiven them as best as I could, but those hurts were very, very deep. And one night I had a dream I had a dream, and it seemingly had nothing to do with that situation. 
But I had this dream. All It was just, I can still see it in my head. It was just light, beautiful pastel colors. And there was a locker, you know, like a school locker. And all of a sudden, that locker just flew open. I didn't come open it or anything. Just the locker just flew open. And all this stuff <laughs> flew up and out of that locker. And then at the very end, there was a little butterfly. <laughs> like, what in the world? And it was like, it looked like papers or whatever. And I woke up, and that hurt was completely gone. Completely gone. I, I, how could I have ever thought of that exceedingly abundantly? Lord, can you give me a dream about a locker that really has nothing to do with anything that has to do with anything I'm dealing with and have some papers fly out of it and a little butterfly and then take my hurt away? I, I don't know how that works, but some little locker in my heart had opened up while I was asleep, and the Lord had miraculously taken that away. He can do anything. He has protected and sent miraculous financial provision. He has given divine direction and specific words for us. I believe he can do anything in an instant, in the blink of an eye, with one word from his lips. Now, I want to make that very, very clear before I say this next sentence. Have I laid the foundation enough? Do you believe that I believe that God can do anything? He can do anything in an instant. So what do we do when he doesn't? What do we do when God says no? So today, I think there's somebody here who needs some peace because they have gotten a divine no. And sometimes that's what we need. And that's what we're going to talk about today is God's divine no. Because we know he is able. But sometimes our sweet, wonderful, good, kind, faithful God says no. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. To him who is able, not glory to him who always does everything in a split second the way we think it should be. He is able whether he does it or not. So to that one who is able, whether he does it or not, what is he due? Glory. He is due all of the glory, whether he chooses to do it or not. Whether the answer is quick or whether the answer is a long process. To him, let there be glory. Let there be glory when there is healing, but let there be glory when the healing does not come as we expect it. Let there be glory when there is instant deliverance, but let there be glory when the road is slow and it takes a while and you have to face your issues and deal with them instead of them disappearing instantly. Let there be glory when there are rainbows and skittles and puppies and sunshine, but let there be glory when the sky gets dark and we feel alone and our hope is dry. Because it doesn't matter how we feel, and it does not matter how he answers. That's really beside the point. The point is he is able and he is worthy, period, enough said. God always answers. We get this wrong. We pray and we don't hear anything. Well, God hasn't answered yet. Oh, yes, he has. Oh, yes, he has. Every single time you call upon his name, he is faithful enough to answer it. Our definitions are just a little different. He instantly instantly says yes, and oh, we rejoice, as we should. We should be rejoicing when he answers instantly. But he says, wait, 
and we kind of sulk and wring our hands and wonder what's wrong with us and why our prayers don't work like other people's prayers. And he says no. And we feel forsaken because he doesn't hear us. And we sometimes even question, is God even real? Is he even there? Can he even hear me? Does he exist? Am I really his child? Can he really do anything? We somehow have to get past doing that when the Lord says no. We have to let glory arise no matter what the answer is. Because accepting God's no is a part of maturing in the spirit and letting the deep, strong fruit of his spirit grow. He is sovereign. That's a hard concept for Americans. Because we're not going to have anybody tell us what to do. We're going to do it our own way. We're going to figure it out. This is who we are. We're Americans. God is sovereign. That means his word is final. His word reigns. He's not some dictator in the sky, though, thankfully enough. He, everything he does comes from a place of love and goodness and kindness to us. But he is sovereign. So that means his yes is sovereign. His wait a while is sovereign. His no is sovereign. If he didn't get to make the final decision for us, he wouldn't be God. He's not just a mentor or a friend or an advisor who gives you some, you know, that's some, that's some good advice. I'm going to take that into consideration. I'm going to think about that. He is sovereign. He gets to choose because he knows exactly the answer that you and I need to get the best out of us and the most glory for his name. So when the answer is no, what is your response? Think about that for just a moment. When the Lord says no, how have you responded in the past? So I want us to think about a couple of things. Because when the Lord says no, and there's kind of this gap, and if we don't fill it with something, the enemy loves to just come sliding right in and twist God's answer. And he often does a couple of things. There are a couple of lies we're going to address. The first one is, there is something wrong with you. As if somehow it's your fault, you have done something. That's the reason that God is not answering you. God doesn't hear you. God doesn't love you. You must really not believe. You must have some sort of a lack of faith that's causing him to say no. Or sometimes the enemy slithers in and says, Oh, the Lord said no. Let me tell you all the awful things that are getting ready to happen because the Lord said no. Things are not going to work out. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he twists these things while we get a no because this gap is empty. Let me tell you, God loved us enough to wrap himself in flesh and to come die on a cross for our sins. Do you think for a moment that because he said no, he doesn't love you. He loved you enough to die on a cross, but now all of a sudden when he says no to you, he doesn't love you anymore. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't listen to your voice. He loves us so much that sometimes he has to tell us no. That goes hand in hand. And I've heard this from people too. Well, I, I do believe, but I'm struggling just a little bit. But, you know, there was one time when I was praying that for that person, and I just kind of had this little flash of unbelief, and I think I'm the person that, that caused the Lord to not send the answer. Do you think you are that powerful? <laughs> I mean, let's get over ourselves here, people. If we think we are powerful enough because one time something flashed through our brain, and we, we didn't know, and... Come on. He is so much bigger, more powerful. You cannot stop him because you have struggled a little bit with your faith. Because there was a man who came to him and said, I believe. 
uh, but also I really am struggling with my belief. And there was still healing that came. He looks upon us in compassion. Stop thinking that he is just this mean person who's up in the sky who's going to get you and you do one little thing wrong and he's marked you off the list and that's the reason that your answers are not coming. We got to stop that. Because he loves us more than anything. He is faithful to his people. And you can go to him and say, I am having a hard time believing for this, but I want you to help me. I, I'm believing as best as I can, but Lord, I'm struggling too. And you better believe he will take all of those things and mix it up and make up the difference. And he will still answer in the way that he knows is best. Or have you ever heard the enemy say this one? I guess you just didn't pray enough for that. Yeah. Now, if you're not praying, that's a different story. <laughs> you need to pray. Prayer should always be your first response. But if you have prayed, well, that is just a lie. Oh, you didn't pray enough. Now, you prayed 700 times, but if you had just prayed 701, then the answer, you know, would have come for that person. I want to take a look at 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. And lest, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Did Paul just not pray enough? Maybe he should have just kept on fourth time. It's not that Paul did not pray enough. It's that the answer was no. No. He wanted whatever this tormenting thing was that was coming to bother him, he clearly wanted it to stop. It clearly was an issue that was bothering him enough that he would take it to the Lord more than once. He, he pleaded with the Lord, it says. It wasn't just a, hey, if you have a minute, if you're around, can you go ahead and take this from me? He pleaded with the Lord. Take this away. But if the Lord had removed whatever this thing was, Paul lets us know that he would have been exalted above measure. He would have been filled with pride. And there is no telling what would have happened to Paul if that would have happened. There's no telling where Paul would have ended up if that was the case. He loves us too much to always answer in the way we think or want it to be. His no is for our good. It is for our good. We are not going to twist God's arm to get us what we want. Or if we are, we need to stop. Is, oh, Lord, you've got to do this. You've got to do it this way. It's got to be in this time. It just has to be. You have to do this. Do you trust him to know what is best? We say that. Do you trust him to, do, to know what is best? If so, then you need to trust him to do what is best. You need to know when the no comes that what is best for you has been given to you. So we're going to pause right here for just a second. Don't, don't go anywhere. Don't float away in your mind. But we're going to stop and we're going to pray. You're just going to stay right in your seat. The sermon's not done, so don't go anywhere. Don't get up. Don't come up here yet. We're just going to pause and we're going to pray. And we're going to address these lies. And so if you have struggled with any of these things, 
I want you to pray for yourself right now. Pray for your family. That these lies that we have just been talking about, that you're not enough, something's wrong with you, you haven't prayed enough, the Lord doesn't hear you, that those lies would absolutely be stopped. If you're struggling with it now, or we're just going to lay the path for the future whenever you get a no, that those things will not come and torment you, that that's just going to be put to an end. So right now, pray for yourself, and let's just pray. Lord, I thank you, Jesus because your truth will always prevail. Lord, we are asking you to come and to step in the gap of your no. Lord, you know the things that we have all prayed about, that we have not gotten the answer that we maybe had really wanted and what we thought was best. And now the enemy has come in and twisted that and made it against us made it against you, Lord Jesus. We are asking you that you would stop the voice of the enemy, that you would smite it, that you would remove those hideous voices from our mind and our spirit. Lord Jesus, that the work that you want to do would be released and that instead of us turning to ourselves whenever you tell us no, that we would let a deep work be done, that it would be changed for our good and for your glory. Lord, silence the voice of the enemy. Right now, you know the specific things that are being called before you, the times that the enemy has told someone that they are not good enough, that you do not not hear them. Whatever it might be that the enemy or our own minds are saying, I thank you for silencing it right now. We will not accept these things. We will not accept these lies while you continue to work things out for our good. Even when we don't see it, even when we don't understand it, Even when it's not there in the way we want it to be, he is moving. Thank you, Emily, for that song today. Thank you, worship team. He is moving. It just doesn't always look the way we want it to. So if you get a no, I want to give you some things to think about, some things to do. First of all, if you are praying for someone's salvation and it has not happened, you never stop praying for that. Never. Salvation is a different category of what I'm talking about today because it is not the will of the Lord that anyone should perish. No one. And so we never stop praying. Well, I prayed three times and they, well, they're not getting saved. Oh, well, I guess, you know, I guess that's a no. No, it's never the Lord's will. So I could just settle that for you right now. If you're wondering if it's the will of the Lord for somebody to get saved, the answer is always yes. He always wants that person to find him. So keep praying for salvation no matter what. But if for everything else you get a no and you're trying to figure out what that means, start looking around and ask the Lord to reveal if there is something else connected to it that you need to pray about. Because sometimes when we're praying for one thing, It's not really about that one thing. It's really about there's a whole spider web, a whole net back behind that one thing that all these other things are connected to. You might be praying for one person that maybe you're not getting along with or something and you're having a difficulty, but there's lots of issues that are tied behind that one person. And it might have to do with them or it might have to do with you. Whatever it is, ask the Lord Be conscious about it. So you have prayed and you are getting a no. The door is not opening. That's the time to start looking around and asking the Lord, Lord, is there something else that I need to pray about that is tied to this situation? You want to ask the Lord, is there something that I need to address, Lord? Because he will use the circumstances in our life to reveal the things in us that need to be taken care of. Sometimes he maybe would want to give you what you're asking for, but you don't have the right attitude to receive it. You won't be able to keep it with the right attitude. And so you can ask him, Lord, is there, is there something in me? Am I being self-centered? Is there sin? Is there a bad attitude? If there is something, please reveal it to me. Or just in general, Lord, is there something that's hindering this prayer? What is it? Is it a spiritual thing? Is it somebody else? Is it something? What is hindering this prayer? Because I believe if you will ask and you will listen, 
that he will answer you. It, that, that's the part. You can ask and not listen, and then you're like, oh, it didn't get an answer from the Lord. But if you ask and you will listen, you have his spirit. You can hear his voice. And so you can listen to whatever the answer is. And sometimes deep inside, we know that the Lord is no, that the answer is no. And we just need to ask the Lord for grace to accept it. Because there are a lot of feelings that go along with that no. We, we don't always just get to say, oh, the answer's no. Okay, moving on. You know, my dreams are completely crushed now. My plans have completely changed. Oh, no big deal. I'm just going to move on. It doesn't work like that either. When he says no, we sometimes need loads of grace to be able to accept it and, and move forward with what that is. And here's one last one for you to think about whenever the Lord says no. And this is one thing that I have had to ask the Lord a lot. What am I supposed to be learning? Because I don't want to go around this bush again. I I, I don't want to keep traveling on this little roundabout. I want to get off of this road. And I want to get off as quickly as I can, Lord. And so if if this no is tied to me learning something, How can I learn it? What am I doing wrong? What am I not doing? What do I need to do more of? Lord, what do I need to learn? But I will tell you, in the times that he has not answered the way I have wanted, I have learned some of my most extraordinary lessons. Lessons that have molded and shaped me into who I am today. And without his nose, so many times, I have no idea where I would be. Lessons and paths of no that have been paved with tears, with the unknown, with wrestling, with facing things in my past, with facing my hurts but also facing the hurts that I have done to other people and having to apologize and facing the things that I need to change. Those are the things. I haven't learned those things when God said yes and I'll just take care of it like that. I've learned those things whenever it was slow and hard and there was a no. I don't know if some of you all know, too, I had a frozen shoulder. Um, I don't know if you know what that is. Some of you do, and I know some of you faithfully prayed for me. You, you literally, your, your, fro- your shoulder freezes, and it, you can't move it. And so my shoulder was fine, and then all of a sudden one day, my shoulder was not fine. It can be caused from an injury or surgery or something like that, but they also don't know why it happens. And I went to the doctor because I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, It was extraordinarily painful. I couldn't sleep. I'd wake up all throughout the night. If my arm got caught on something, I literally would sit down and cry. I could not stop the tears from coming. It was literally one of the most painful things that I have ever been through in my life. And then I couldn't raise my arm. And so I could just kind of do like that. And so, you know, I'm trying to fix my hair, literally like turning my head to the side. I went to the doctor and they said, oh, yeah, a a frozen shoulder will last for 18 months. That's a year and a half. So there's three stages. Each of the stages is six months long. And guess what? So you all were praying for me. And I was just believing the Lord was just going to, oh, Lord, I'm going to come to church. And, man, I'm going to just lift up my arm. And I, I'm just, I could imagine what it would feel like. I, I'm going to feel some warmth in my shoulder and maybe some tingling. And, and then I'm just going to, oh, I was just going to be so amazing. Guess what? The Lord did not heal my shoulder that way. <laughs> but look, he did heal it, but not that way. It took 18 months. When they said 18 months, it literally took 18 months. And I can't tell you how many of those kinds of things I have had. Maybe I'm just really stubborn. I don't know. And it takes those things 
But looking at those things now, I am so thankful for his no and for the long journey that led to so much more depth in him than a miraculous answer would have brought. There's a lady named Mary Oliver who wrote a very short poem called The Uses of Sorrow. And I read this little poem, it's literally just a few lines long. And I, th I read it years ago and I thought, no. I was going through a really, really, really hard time. And I thought, nope, nope, that's not true. She wrote, someone I loved once gave me a box full of darkness. It took me years to understand that this too was a gift. Someone I loved once gave me a box full of darkness, and it took me years to understand that this too was a gift. And again, at the time when I read it, <laughs> this darkness that I'm sitting in is not a gift. I can tell you that. Except the darkness that I have passed through in this life has brought compassion that I would have never, ever had for people. I have thankfulness that I can tell you I would never have without walking through darkness. The ability to persevere, to lean on him, to hear his voice, to rest in him, to love his word. It would have never happened if I had not walked through some darkness. The darkness that he has walked with us through. The, the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I'm going to walk through it with you. But we've got to have those dark places to get us to be the people that we need to be. I will tell you too. I forgot to ask you, Scott, if I can tell this. Now you're just going to have to forgive me. You, you all, and many of you know that Scott was diagnosed many years ago, several years ago, with Meniere's disease, which has affected his hearing and his one ear, his right ear. He always has ringing and roaring in that ear, hearing loss, and for many years it caused instant, severe vertigo. We're not talking about like, oh, I feel a little lightheaded, like severe vertigo. It was debilitating, and I have waited for years, same thing, for the Lord to just, I just was so desperate, Lord, heal him. So many of you have faithfully prayed for Scott, and he's gone up when ministers were here, and I thought, oh, tonight's the night. He's going to just, all of a sudden, he's going to say, it's gone. It's gone. I mean, we're going to know when it's gone. <laughs> he doesn't go, he's not going to have to go get a test. There's not going to be anything that's going to happen. His ear is going to open up. That ringing and roaring is going to be gone. Thankfully, the vertigo has not happened for some time, and we are so thankful, and I do believe that is because of your prayers. It's not totally gone. The issue is still partially there. And I have to tell you that for a long time I thought, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong, Lord? I pray for him whenever he's laying in that bed and he cannot move and the room is spinning 100 miles an hour for 24 hours straight. What am I doing? doing wrong. I somehow felt like it was my fault that he was not getting the answer that he needed. Ever felt like that when the Lord says no? And then one day, the Lord helped me, and I realized I am filled with his spirit. And I have prayed, and I have believed and so if he has not answered, there is a reason. Now, I wish I could explain that reason to you. I wish I could say the Lord went ahead and revealed, and now I have complete understanding of why this has happened. That part I don't know. But it offered me so much peace for the Lord to just say, my child, it is not you. 
there is a purpose to this. And I will tell you now, when I hear a spouse who says, my husband has chronic illness and we have to change our plans on a dime. It happens all the time. I talked to somebody just a couple of weeks ago in this exact situation. We have plans that we have made, and then in an instant, it has to change. In the past, I probably would have said, oh, I am so sorry about that. I'll pray for you. And now, do you need a hug? (laughs) Do you want me to bring you some dinner? What can I do for you? Can I help you somehow? Because I know what that feels like when you have it all set and it suddenly is gone. I just want to tell somebody, I don't know who needs to hear this today, but when God says no, it's really not about you. Don't take it personally. You are his child and he only has good for you. That's what he has in mind in everything that he does. He has good for you. And even when we don't figure out all the details of the circumstances, he has good for you. All right, I got to move it along here. One other thing, there's a, a lie that there's something wrong with you, and there's a lie that the enemy comes to tell us that there's something wrong with God. If it's not you, then obviously it has to be God. Now I'm going to go through this one quickly because the answer is really short and sweet. There is nothing wrong with God. (laughs) Period. There is nothing ever wrong with God. He is not lacking in any single way. And I'm going to read scriptures for you real quickly to prove it. Matthew 19 and 26 said, but Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Luke 1 and 37 said, for with God nothing will be impossible. Genesis 18 and 14, the beginning of that says, is anything too hard for the Lord? Jeremiah 32 and 17 says, O Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. So when the enemy comes in to say, well, clearly God just doesn't care anymore and he's not able and he's not listening to you and he probably can't do anything anyway, you can just stand up and you can just start quoting some of those scriptures. He loves you. We are always on his mind. He loves us collectively. He loves us individually. He sings over us, the Bible tells us. We are the apple of his eye. There is nothing wrong with him. Sometimes he just tells us no. That's it. So right now, before we move on, we're going to stop and we're going to pray against this lie that our brains would be protected from it, that our spirits would be protected from it, that when the enemy comes in to hiss this hideous lie, that we would not listen to it. Pray with me. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, because there is nothing ever wrong with you. Lord, you always have good for your people, and you are always powerful. You are always able to answer. You are always able to prove that you are able to do all things, but in your wisdom, you know that sometimes we need to hear no. Lord, I thank you for protecting us, that we would not believe the lie of the enemy, that there is something wrong with you and that your arm is short and your promise isn't able to reach. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you are able, O God, to speak louder than any lie. Lord, let us not believe it. Let us not fall prey to it. Lord Jesus, stand and fight for your people, that we would always believe that you are more than able to take care of us. We are thankful for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. I'm going to finish up with one story from Genesis. Remember that scripture that we read in the very beginning? Scott was teaching about Joseph a couple of Wednesday nights ago. And I have to tell you, the Lord has given me all of this over like the last year. I have just, I have a pile of scraps of paper on my desk that just at various times the Lord would give me little pieces of it. So I just pulled it all together and I thought, I just kind of need one thing to kind of wrap it up, Lord. And just a couple of weeks ago, 
Scott was teaching about the story of Joseph and his brothers. I thought, that's it right there. The Lord just gave it to me. Now, you'll remember in 44 and 33, it says, Now, therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the lad as a slave to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brothers. So in case you weren't here or you don't know what this is talking about, Joseph and his brothers were in Egypt, but they did not know who Joseph was yet. He had still hidden himself from them, um, disguised himself, so they didn't know um, what was going on. The brothers had already come and went back to get Benjamin, the youngest brother, the one his father did not want him to go. Nothing could happen to Benjamin. You better bring him back, or my heart's just going to absolutely break. And so here are the brothers, and they started to go back home and Joseph's cup was planted and found in Benjamin's bag. And so Benjamin was imprisoned. And the other brothers were told, you can go on, but Benjamin is staying. If you want to know what you should do when God says no, we can learn that lesson from Joseph's brothers. Because when Joseph or when Benjamin was in prison, there was one brother who stood up. That's what we read. He said, please, let, let me go. Let me stay here and, and let my brother go. He was willing to take the place of captivity to the one who had received no. Do you know what brother stood up and said, please take me instead? Anybody remember who was here or just remember? It's Judah. What does Judah mean? Praise. Praise stood up when there was a no. When you have a no in your life, your praise needs to rise up. It needs to be the first response to anything that comes along. When there is something bound, when there is something that can't move or won't change, and the answer was still no. But praise can rise up to the Lord because he is worthy. Praise arose above everything else. So today, if you are struggling with a no that the Lord has given to you, I want to encourage you to just let your praise arise because he is worthy. He is worthy no matter how he is orchestrating your circumstances and everything is going to be okay. Everything. I'll just tell you, if you ever, if you need somebody to tell you that, everything is going to be okay. As our musicians come, I'm going to just finish reading a psalm. Somehow when you praise the Lord, no matter what the answer is, you are acknowledging his sovereignty. When you praise, you are telling him, I trust you no matter what the answer is. When you are praising him, you are releasing him to work and to do what needs to happen. When you are praising him, your attitude changes and you can just accept his no in a way that maybe you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Your praise makes his no acceptable. Psalm 145, 1 through 10 says, I will extol you, my king, my God, O king, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your good greatness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all of his works. And verse 10 says, all of your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your, your saints shall bless you. When you find a no in your life, praise needs to be the first thing that arises. Praise needs to stand up whether the answer comes your way or not. Praise needs to let the Lord know that you will trust him and walk with him no matter how he chooses to answer. So if you would, let's stand together.
I'm going to give you an opportunity to do just what we have talked about. If you just need to lift some praise up to the Lord, if you need to let him minister to you about whatever no you have received, let him do that. If you want to do that in your pew, if you want to just come forward, come and rest in the presence of the Lord for just a little bit and let him minister to you again. Let him speak to you. Let him give you some peace. Let him help you know why something has happened or at least to give you the peace about it because there is love and glory and righteousness locked up in that know that you have received he still loves you in fact he's told you no because he does lord thank you jesus right now for ministering to us Give us some peace, Lord Jesus, in the midst of every no that we have heard. Let us know that you are orchestrating every detail that you have us. Lord Jesus, when it hasn't turned out exactly as we had planned, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for helping us to still trust in you to know that when you say no, you are still in charge. When you say no, Lord Jesus, that you love us, we will worship no matter what the answer is, Lord. I thank you for doing it, Jesus. Let's just worship him right now.